Hey there, in this video, we will see how we can build Razorpay integration using serverless framework. First, we will build out Lambda functions, that is, we will expose our serverless APIs to integrate with Razorpay and then build out a React front end which we will deploy or host on S3 and make it available via CloudFront to the users. All of this we will be doing using something known as serverless framework. In order to get started, we need to install serverless framework CLI. In order to do so, go on to the serverless.com docs getting started. From there, you need to install the serverless CLI. You can do it with variety of options, but I would prefer it doing via NPM. So you can globally install this serverless CLI so that we can make use of it. Secondly, once we have this serverless CLI installed, we need to set up our AWS credentials. Setting up AWS credentials is pretty easy. You need to sign in to your AWS account, create an IAM user, provide permissions and in return it will provide you the access key and access secret. Those access key and access secret you need to configure using serverless config credentials or you can issue AWS configure which would set up your AWS communication. Alright, so once you have it, what we need to do is get started with the code. Okay, so since we will be using Razorpay as a payment system, we need to sign up for a Razorpay account. Once you sign up, you will be taken to the dashboard. On the dashboard, by default, you will be in the test mode. Once you go to production, where you will receive payments and would be able to withdraw them, you need to submit KYC. But since we are using it only for development purpose, we can leave it alone till here. Once you are in test mode, what you need to do is, you need to go to settings. You can select whatever the theme you want, you could provide the logo, etc. Go to API keys. I already have a API key here, but if you don't have, you will see an option where you can create a key. So here, what I will do is I'll regenerate my test key. Once you do that, you will get a key ID and key secret. Okay, so this is important because this will create the integration of your APIs with Razorpay. In this video, I want to show you how we can use AWS Secrets Manager with serverless framework. So, what we will do is, we will configure this Razorpay, Razorpay ID and secret in Secrets Manager. So, for that, I will go on to my AWS account. Go to the Secrets Manager service. We will create a new secret. And that Secret is of type other since it's nothing related to the AWS database or any other services from AWS. So I'll select other and here you can provide the value. So I will have a key called Razorpay API key. The value I will copy from the credentials that was created. Let's paste it. The other option what we need is the razor pay. We need is razor pay API secret. For that, we'll take this value, copy it, and save it here. Once you do it, click on next. You need to provide some name. So what we will give is we will give dev slash razor pay razor pay 
secrets okay you don't need to do anything else click on next next and click on store okay refresh this page and you see you have dev slash razor page as your secret name okay we go back to this dashboard and click ok once you click on ok you will no longer see the secret you will only see is the key id so ensure you have the key id and key secret stored somewhere and if you forget it then you will need to regenerate them all right so next we will go on to our vs code so i have my vs code open here and we will go into the terminal okay so in the terminal what we need to do is create our serverless apis so for that i will create serverless or i'll say razor pay or i'll just call it apis okay i'll create a folder called api and also we need to create our front end so what we will do is we will create npx create app i'll name it just front end and we will be using a template which is of chakra ui the reason i'm using chakra ui here is because i don't want to worry much about the css etc and i want to pretty much use all of that to build a somewhat decent ui okay so we will create that so basically what we have here is we have an api and a front end okay so within api what we will do is we will create a serverless project okay so i will open another terminal i'll go within api and i will issue sls command which is a short form for serverless i need aws node.js http api okay so i will okay so basically what we could do is i will remove this api project okay and i'll create it right away here Okay, and I will name it API. Okay, so that it creates an API folder. And we have all the files right within that folder. Okay, as we can see, I will skip this. I don't want to deploy anything. Great. So I have API and I have front end. Okay. So my front end is still being initialized. So if we go inside this API folder, we see that we have a serverless YML file. Okay. It has a handler.js and git ignores. Okay. So what we will do is we will clean this up a bit. Okay. I will clean this up. I want to use Node.js 16, which is the latest LTS version at the time of recording okay i'll delete this handler.js as well for now okay so within this folder i will create src handlers okay so this is a folder structure that i would pretty much prefer Okay, at the same time, I will also create another folder called utils. Okay, so basically, these two folders I always have in any of my projects. Okay, so in serverless YAML, we will go ahead and add some more details that are needed. So, one thing is stage. Okay, so what we mention here is that if an option is provided in the argument, use it. Otherwise, use value of dev. 
similarly for region if the option is provided use it else use ap south one which is mumbai memory size i will keep it for 128 mb log retention days log retention in days i will keep it one for now because since this is for development i don't need it for many days and i think for now this should be all right okay so i have functions okay so at the same time we might want few environment variables as well i'll define environment we saw that some of the environment that we need basically when interacting with razor pay is the client id and client secret so what i will do is i will have those defined here api secret Okay. Similarly, we had API key as well, right? So we will use that API key. Okay. Now, one thing that we saw is that we have stored this in Secrets Manager. So, how do we reference the value from Secrets Manager into this serverless YAML file? Okay. For that, what we can do is uh, let's uh, define something called custom. Okay, this is up to us. And here, what I will do is I'll keep it as razor pay. And in order to reference, we need to give SSM that is secrets manager. Okay, slash AWS reference secrets manager slash we need to give the name that we had configured what was the name that we configured it was dev slash razor pay okay so dev slash razor pay great and in order to get this RazorPay API secret, I need to get that key from this secret. Now, this is an object. Okay, so this will be a JSON object since we had a couple of secrets within this. So in order to refer a right one, what we will do is we will use the notations. So I'm saying that from this given file, go to custom. And within the custom, go to razor pay. And from the razor pay, fetch the given secrets. So in order to do that, it is self colon. Go to custom. Within the custom, there is razor pay. So custom dot razor pay. And within razor pay, take the razor pay API key secret. Similarly, we will copy this and we will fetch the secret as well. Okay, great. This is all good. The next thing what we will do is we will define our APIs. In order to define APIs, we need to define handlers. So, in order to work with any payment integration, the first part is we need to create an order that is basically checkout. And once the order payment is successful, we will need to verify that no one has fiddled with it and it is actually authentic. Okay. So in a nutshell, we know that we will need two APIs to be in place. So we will create them. The first one is checkout dot js okay i'll just create the files for now and the second one is verify okay then in the serverless yaml file we need to 
reference the functions to the handlers that we have created. So the first function that we have is checkout. Okay. The handler is present in SRC handlers. Checkout is the file name. And within this checkout, we will export a method called handler. Okay, so dot handler. It is of type HTTP API. So in the events, we need to define that it is HTTP API. And we need to provide the path. The path is we want it to be made available on slash payment slash checkout. And the method will be post. Okay, similarly, I'll copy this. I will name it verify. The handler is verify. Make the path also verify and it is type post. Okay, great. So once this is done, let's go and Define our handlers. Okay, so the first part is as we define, we need to do module dot exports dot handler. This handler is the one that is referenced here, so it should be same. Okay, we will create an arrow function. Event, context, and callback. Okay. So similarly, I'll copy this and paste it in verify as well. Okay, any method should return a status code and a body. Okay. So the first thing what we will do is we will define and work with this checkout method. For that, let us go to the RazorPay documentation. Now the RazorPay documentation says that we need to install RazorPay. Okay, so we will go ahead and install RazorPay. For that, I will go to my command line. I'll go within API and I'll install RazorPay. Great. So in our package.json, we have RazorPay. Okay, this is good. So we go back to our checkout and we'll go back to the documentation. Go to the build integration part, which says that first we need to install RazorPay and then we need to instantiate RazorPay. And in order to instantiate RazorPay, we need to create an instance and for that we need to supply the key ID and key secret that was generated as part of the step that we saw earlier. Okay. And then in order to create an order, we need to call the create method and we need to provide some options that is amount, currency, etc and the amount should always be in the smallest currency unit since the currency is inr here the smallest currency is in paise so if you have 100 rupees you will have to convert them into paise that is by multiplying it to 100 okay so keep this in mind that the amount should always be in the smallest currency unit Okay, based on the currency that you are working with. Okay, so first we will go and create this instance. Okay, in order to create that instance, what I will rather do is, I will make use of my utils. I will create a file called razorpay.js. Okay, and here I will have Razor pay require from Razor pay 
that we just installed and then const instance new razor pay and within this we had to provide key id okay and we know that we had the key id made available from the environment variable right and it was razor pay api key and razor pay api secret correct okay so what i will do is i'll refer it to it similarly we need to provide key secret okay in this manner okay and last what we will do is we will just export this instance okay this is the default export that we are doing it here okay so now let's use this instance in our checkout.js okay so for that i will call require i have it in my util slash razor pay okay and this instance we will make use here so before that we will go and copy this options right okay i'll go and copy this options i'll paste it here as we can see amount currency received this is optional so i'll remove the optionals once for now okay this i'll make const now we need this amount right so this amount we will make it as an input coming via the api that is if the ui is invoking it it can pass this amount to the api so in order to do that we need to use we need to get this amount from the body that will be part of this event okay so i will go with the destructuring okay so this event dot body is in string so we need to first parse it into an object so i will use the json dot parse and from that json i would fetch the amount okay this amount i will use here and since it should be in the smallest currency i i know that i will be supporting only inr for now i will multiply it with 100 okay now the thing is everything that is coming out from here it will be in string type right so i know this amount is number i will convert it first and then multiply it to 100 okay great so now since we have the options i will call await i'll use this instance razor pay instance dot orders dot create okay pass this options okay um and then in order to return it back to the caller i need to send a body okay of status code which will be 200 and body i need to stringify and set so what what should be the body that we want to send let me call response and i want to say success is through and order i want to pass so this i will send here json dot stringify 
response okay so more or less i have my first method checkout available okay which would be creating an order and then returning that details back to the client okay fantastic so now before we deploy this we would want to test this locally in order to test this locally we will make use of serverless plugin install and that plugin name is serverless offline okay so let's install this serverless offline plugin okay so this might take some time okay so as we can see the serverless offline plugin is installed and the same is referenced in the yml automatically for us one thing to note is the serverless offline starts at port 3000 but since we'll also be having a react front end which by default starts at port 3000 we would want to change this to some other port in order to do that what you need to do is under this custom have the name of the plugin that is serverless offline and we need to override the value of http port and we will call it 3001 okay so once we have it let's see if everything works out well in order to start in an offline mode we give sls offline start okay so here there is a problem it says cannot resolve serverless.yml variable resolutions occurred with provider.environment key not found at self source okay so provider dot environment okay okay so the problem could be oh this custom should not be at the provider level it should be at the root level okay so let's run this again great so as we can see the sls offline has started and it has made these two functions available at localhost 3001 so let's try this out so in order to try this out what i will do is i will create a i'm using this http client plugin so i'll define api http define a variable called host which is http localhost colon 3001 and then our first method is post on this post slash payment slash checkout we will be sending a json and the field that we will be sending is amount so let's say 100 rupees okay so let's send the request and as we can see it is success true and in return we have got order id and certain things from raise up pay okay so this is a good sign so we basically have 
we basically have this uh, checkout API ready. Similarly, let's go ahead and um, have the verify method as well. Okay. So, what is this verify method is that when there is a checkout and the order payment is successful, Razor Pay or the payment site will redirect it to your API wherein you can validate the signature just to ensure that the user has not fiddled and just sent out a request to your endpoint to look like it has worked okay so for that let's go back to the razor pay dashboard and if we come at the bottom we should be seeing something called verify payment signature and what it says is there will be three things that will be sent by razor pay onto your endpoint one would be the order id other is the payment id and the signature okay and it has also provided this sample code here okay so what we will do is uh, we will copy this sample code okay, we will copy this sample code till here okay we will copy and we will paste this into our handler okay we will need to do some cleanup which we will do okay so as we can see here it is taking this from the body okay so like before we will start restructuring but one thing we should note here is that it is not, it doesn't send it in the json format it sends, sends it in the url encoded way so that's the reason and when it comes via the secure channel it is base 64 encoded so we need to first is what we will do is we will console.log event.body okay and then since the data will come in the form of uh, url encoded and base64 decode we need to install a package so what i will do is npm install js base64 okay so i have it so i will bring that package in constant require js base64 and the class that we want to pull is base64 okay so I'll just create a variable data and if let's say we get it in base64 format so I'll just check if it is is valid that is event dot body okay because I have noticed sometimes that it is sending it in base64 sometimes it just sets it in the plain text so we will handle both the cases okay so if it is in base64 format then and it's in url encoded right so we will use a package that comes in with node.js called query string okay so we will bring that in and we will have data query string dot parse base 64 dot decode event dot body okay if it is not in base 64 format i will copy this as is but i will just send the event body without doing a base 64 decode okay so now i have the data and in data i have my variables in a json format this query string takes in the url encoded way and converts it into a object okay 
So the next thing is we will destructure from this data. So what we will get is we will get razor pay order ID. We will have razor pay payment ID and we will have razor pay signature. All this value will be there in this data. Okay. And what this does is I'll take this where crypto out onto the top. Okay. Now here in this body, it is piping the razor pay order ID with the payment ID. Okay, so I'm just beautifying it here. And then in the expected signature, it uses the crypto package to create a SHA-56 and it needs the API secret. Okay, so this API secret is this one, I will copy this and I'll replace it. Okay, I don't need these two things. Okay, if the expected signature is equal to equal to the signature that we have. Okay, then I will send a callback with status code as 302 because we need to redirect it back to the front end. Okay. So headers. Location. For now, I will just hard code something. Okay. Remind me to change this back. I will just say payment slash success and I'll pass something called payment ID equal to. Okay. So I'll just change this to literal and I'll pass the razor pay payment ID. Okay, and if it is, if the signature doesn't match, I will send 302, but I will send it to payment failure page. Okay, pretty good. Okay, so with this, we have our API is ready for checkout and verify. Okay, so we'll close all this for now. We'll go back to the front end. A front end is ready. Okay, so for the front end, I'll go inside front end and I do npm start. Okay, so if everything is good, we should see a Chakra UI here. Okay. As you can see, we see the Chakra UI. Fantastic. So what we will do is we'll go back to the our front end package. Let's clean up a lot of things. I don't need all this. Don't need all these files. They're all junk files. I just delete it. Okay, there is an error. That's fine. Totally fine. And remove this. Then I will delete all this unused import that is in index.js. Okay, need this. 
I don't have color mode script. I just have an app. And I will delete the imports. Successfully compiled. And I have Chakra UI. Let's just put an H1. Welcome. Just to make sure everything works. I go back. And welcome. Okay. So we have our clean front end here. So what we will do is um, let's create our simple front end. So I go back to my app.js. Okay. Um, we will have to install the React Router DOM. So I will do npm install React Router DOM. Okay, and I will do npm start. Okay. Great. So now here we will bring in. We need to bring in few things from react router DOM. Okay. The first thing what we will bring is the browser router. We will name it as router. We need routes and we need route. Okay, these are the three things we need for now. Okay. And in index, okay. What I will do is since I want. The chakra behavior, right? I want more of a what do you say? TSH uh, to be applied. So I will wrap this app within chakra provider. Okay, so chakra provider. And I will take this app and wrap it within. I need to import this chakra provider. So to do that, annually import it from at the rate chakra UI React, and the name is chakra provider. Okay, there is a lint error. That's fine. That's because of app.js. Okay, so in the app, I will create a router. Within the router, I'll have routes. And within the routes, I'll have a route. Okay, so the route path, I'll say slash, that is our home. And in element, I want it to import our home component okay so for that i will go ahead and create home dot jsx r a f c e okay and in app dot js element i will import the home component okay if everything is good it should compile great so let's go back and see home okay so that's good so we have our home component which is working fine okay so we will go to home okay uh in the home we will try to create two products from where we can actually buy okay and those products we will be showing in terms of cards right so let's just create card.jsx okay 
I'm just creating it and keeping. Uh, we will fill in this data. Okay, let's go to our home. Okay, so the best thing of using Chakra is that it gives us a very nice uh, layout. Okay, so what we will do is we will use it. I'll use box from Chakra. Okay, so within that box, I want a stack. Okay, so that I can place my products. Okay, so I will import stack. Uh, this stack does take certain direction like uh, horizontal and uh, vertical. So what I will do is I'll give direction, direction, I'll say column first and then row. The benefit of this is it will align based on whether you are using it on a web page or a mobile. So accordingly, it will stack either in a horizontal direction or a vertical direction okay so that's good and i want this stack or the box to have the height of 100 vh okay that is to take the full view height okay and within this stack i want my card right so i define this card component and in that card component i would want few of those things to be displayed like the image then the amount right so let's say i want to pass i'll just create two first one is the amount let's say my amount value is 250 okay and i want to pass an image as well okay this will be my first card and the second card will be i just create two cards for now okay the second card will be of rate 655 okay so we know that our card takes in two things like amount and image. So let's go to card. We will grab those properties here. Amount and image. Okay. So what we will do is I want the card to be a vertical right so i can use a v stack and within that i want to use to an image so i will use the chakra self and i want to store a text again from chakra and this text should display the amount okay so i will use this amount and i want to prefix it with rupee symbol okay and it will have a button as well which is again from chakra and let that button be called pay okay so this image will have a source within that source i'll have the value coming in from image okay now let's give some kind of a size so that the image is not too big for the screen i will give a box size of 32 and i'll use an object fit of cover okay and this button will have a on click handler 
on click okay on on click i would want this to make certain call right but that logic will be there in home.jsx right so i'll just convert this into arrow function let's say i will have a method called checkout handler and this amount i will be passing to the checkout handler okay so the same reference i will pass here okay great now if i go to home.jsx let me put in some links of certain images that i already have okay and the other thing is uh, we saw that the card was taking a reference right to a checkout handler so I'll just create that here. Punch checkout handler arrow function. Okay. Basically, I would want it to be a sync, and this same one will pass here. Checkout handler equal to Checkout handler. Save. Okay, let's see how our UI looks. Okay, not bad. I have the two things with pay, pay, very nice. Currently, if I click on pay, nothing should happen because we don't have any logic yet here. Okay, so let's just bring this in center. Okay, in order to bring this to center, I can give something here called align content to center and justify content to center. Let's save. And let's see now. Okay, let's come here. Okay. okay. This should be align items to center. Then it will come in between. Okay, this is even better now. Okay, so now let's see how these things work okay so we need to provide implementation for this okay in order to provide implementation to this we will go back to our method okay so in this checkout handler the first thing we need to call our api the checkout api right which would create an order and give us a order id okay so for that what we will do is we will we can use concepts like redux and use effects etc here but let's keep it simple for now i will using axios okay and here what i will do is i will make a call to axios dot I need to import Axios. Okay, the import is not done, so I'll do import Axios from Axios. Here's dot post. Okay. And here, um, you can make okay. So, what we will do is since this has to make a call to an API server, okay, we need to what we will do is we will create a 
env file okay and in that env file we'll create react underscore app this should be exact because this is the way how react works and we will give the path localhost colon 3001 and at the same time i will also create this and i'll say um api key this is for the razor pay okay okay in order to get the razor pay key could go back to the razor pay the key i'll tell why this is needed so let's put it so that we can start this server okay now here what i will do is i'll do payment post and this I'll get from process.env dot react app payment host. Okay, and then we will use this payment host here because we need to make a call to slash payment slash checkout and it should pass certain options, right? In that option, we need to pass amount. And we saw that the checkout handler was picking in amount so i can pass this amount here what happens is the moment you make a call to axios right axios provides the data in a variable called data and we know that this checkout returns order as part of the response so we can destructure it so we can say axios gives data but within that data, there is a key called order. Okay, so we are interested in this order. So we can do a console.log on the order. Okay, the so order is not defined. Is it? Okay, so let's do one thing. See some yes, so we do data. Okay. We do console dot log data. This data is not defined. Why is it? Okay. Okay, so data we want to destructure order and this okay my bad, it should come here. Okay, now it will work. Okay, compile successfully, which is good. We go back. We refresh, we'll open inspect, we'll go to console, click on pay. Okay, there is connection refused, which is correct because I need to go to API and start the SLS offline. Okay, that is now started. I clear I click on pay again can okay, we see the order is invoked okay so now from this we now you see only we are getting right but where is the payment stuff for that we need to do this integration now so what we will do is we will go back to the documentation okay under the build 
you see there is this manual checkout with callback url right there are two ways handler functions and callback so we have this callback url which is done right which is the um verify method that we built so as you can see here the first thing what we need is we need to have this script so we will copy this script and we will go back to our front end public index.html okay let's clean all these comments these are out of stuff and after the body let's paste this okay uh, let's verify that this will be there so what we will do is we will just log window okay and we will go back to our react page we'll refresh we click on pay okay now we have this window object and in this window object okay we do see razor pay which is good which confirms that the script tag that we added right for razor pay it's being now included within this window object okay which is a good sign so i go back to the documentation let's copy this entire thing okay go back to our code okay and here let's paste it okay so the first thing what they need is the key you remember we had put this key in the dot env right let's take this great the next thing is the amount the amount is what we have got on top so we can use amount The name of our company, let's call it serverless, serverless cart, description, let's say shop via serverless, we can give some image, so what I will do is, I'll provide one image that I have, just put my github avatar order id we saw that we would get from this order id okay callback url should be the one that we had we'll copy this page and it was verified okay Prefill, this is something which is prefilled for us. Let's say John Doe. Okay, call John. This is up to you. You can ask the users to pay. But for now, we will keep it simple. I don't want this notes. Team, I'm okay to keep as is. Now, this option is being passed here. Now, Razor Pay, we know that it was within window dot razor pay i don't i don't have anything of this i delete it and i'll save it okay i believe we should be set see there is no error we go back we refresh let's click on pay Okay, that is good we are having our razor pay stuff here now these are the various options that we have in order to let's use upi and to get the test dummy upi id you can go back to the documentation click on test integration come down this is for the card for the upi we can use success at the rate razor pay to make a successful payment I click on pay now let's see what happens it should redirect to payment success which is correct right because if you remember within our code 
right of the api in the verify method we say that please redirect it to localhost 3000 payment success payment id right now we don't have this path yet on our front end and that's the reason it did not know how to display so what we will do is uh, we'll go back let's create another file here called payment success dot jsx okay r a f c e let's go to our app create another route it was payment slash success i believe payment slash okay just select this as is okay and we want to use the payment success okay so let's go to payment success we know uh, it used to here what we will do is again we will display box this is my favorite we'll use vstack from chakra let's say height is 100 vh save justify content is center align content in center and within this we want to use and heading again from chakra which takes in text transform i want to display it in uppercase and i'll name it order successful and below i want to just have a text it says reference or it was known as payment id that payment id i want to display now this payment id was coming in the query param right so in order to get the query param what we will do is um, we need to use the url search param so let's say search query equal to there is something called use search params from there we will it's an array we'll take the zeroth one and we can get the payment id okay from s query dot get the name of the query param that is payment id the same payment id i am using here if everything is good let's go back let's just refresh this and see if it works fine okay this is wrong okay this should have been the redirection should have been to the react app right yeah it should have been to the react app so what we will do is we'll go back to our serverless api go back to the verify and this path should be of the front end okay let's run this again let's go back to our react page let's make a payment to this clause now and use what success at the rate there's a pay pay now
great the order is successful if we go back now to the razor pay dashboard go to transactions we see there has been a new order id of 655 which is paid so as we can see now we do have our react page and the apis working well together okay so the last step is let's deploy this to cloud and test it on cloud okay so this is the last part of this video which is an interesting one because we will be using serverless framework to deploy both our front end as well as back end to the cloud okay so the first thing what we will do is we will go back to our serverless function okay now this url right we are hard coding here so what we will do is we will get this through an environment variable so i'll just put an environment variable here called redirect url and i'll call it http localhost colon 3000 okay, and this redirect url we will use in our verify okay so what i will do is i'll just have a constant redirect url process.env redirect url this redirect url bring it okay good so once this is done i'll close all and in order to deploy this what we need to do is sls deploy okay so this will create the cloud formation script and create all the lambda functions on the aws Similarly, for the front end, we will be using a plugin called Lift. So, first let us go ahead and create a serverless.yml file in our front end. Okay. Serverless.yml. Okay. So, as usual, we will have some default options. Okay similar to what we just saw and here we need to install a plugin called serverless lift so serverless plugin install hyphen n serverless lift okay so let this plugin be installed Okay, so this may take in time so till then let's just go to our api let's see where it is okay the cloud formation stack is being updated okay so this usually takes uh, around two to two and a half minutes for the first time but post then it is pretty quick okay as we can see here the plugin serverless lift is done okay now this plugin expect certain things called constructs okay so we need to define this constructs and since r is a react pay application give react type single page app all of this is defined into their documentation okay so the documentation links etc are all in the readme file the github repository will be mentioned in the description of the video okay and the important part here is the path so what i will say is whatever is the final output right will be present in a folder called build 
Now, since this is a React application, when we do a production build, it will generate a folder name called build, which will have the minified versions of our application, okay, of the website, right? So, what this constructs or what this plugin will do is, it will take in the files which are present within this build folder and it will host it on S3, configure certain bucket policies and then make it available via CloudFront, okay? The first thing what we need to do is within front end is run npm run build which will generate the production version. Okay. Now one of those things is this dot env is pointing to the local host. Right. So this should probably be the one of the deployed lambda function. Okay. So here as we can see our API deployment is complete. So what we can do is we can take in this host file. Okay. Let's replace it in our react environment. Okay. Go back to the front end folder and let's generate the build again because we want the react app to be with this URL right to the lambda function. The other part that is pending is once this react app is deployed, it will give us a CloudFront URL. That is the URL that we need to define in the redirect URL environment variable in the API's serverless YAML file, right? Which is currently localhost 3000. We will change this and redeploy this application that is the API one once we have the CloudFront URL with us, okay? Now, in the front end, we see that it is complete. Okay. The next thing is just given SLS deploy. Okay. So, this SLS deploy for the front end will take in some time because it needs to prepare an S3 bucket. It will configure the bucket policies, create a cloud front with S3 as an origin and provide us the cloud front URL. This plugin also ensures that on new deployments, it will also invalidate the cloud front cache so that your end users do not see a older version of your UI. Okay. So this will take in few minutes. So till then I will just pause this video. Okay, so here the front end deployment is done. You can see that there is a cloud front URL that is given here. Okay, this is the place where our front end will be accessible. Okay, um, now the same thing we need to specify in the redirect URL of the API, double S YAML. Okay, now all of this we need to do because we don't have any custom domain that is configured for our website. If that was present, then we need not have to go through this multiple rounds because we could just directly mention that URL. But since we don't have that, we need to perform this one time stuff twice. Okay, so since I have replaced the redirect URL, I'll just go and issue a deploy command to our API. Okay, once this is complete, let's have a final round of test with our deployed versions. Okay, so this should not take in a lot of time. The front end did take around five minutes since that was the first time that we were deploying and it had to create a lot of resources. But the further deployments, if we have to do any, that would be done in pretty much half a second or max to a minute. Okay. So let's just wait for the cloud formation stack to be completed for the API. And once done, we are all set to go and try out our amazing serverless app. That is the UI and the API integrated with Razor Pay right on AWS. Okay, so we are almost there. 
Okay, so we do have our API deployed and this is the same URL that we had configured here. So let's go and hit our CloudFront URL, which is on HTTPS. Okay, I click, I click on open. Here you go, we have our website. Click on pay. Okay, it does nothing. Let's go to inspect. And what is the problem? Okay, it says it is blocked by cores. Okay, this is one of those most important thing that we need to take care because our UI is on a separate domain and our API is on a separate domain. So we need to enable cores. If we don't enable cores, then we will not be able to proceed. If both this UI and API was on the same, same domain, then we did not have to configure cores. Okay, in order to configure cores, let's go back to our API, go to this serverless project. Okay, and then in the serverless YAML file, we need to go within the provider. Okay, let's have HTTPI and within that we need to just set course to through. Once done, let's go and deploy this back. Okay, so let's wait for this deployment to complete. Okay, we do have our APIs deployed. Let's go back to our front end. Let's refresh. Okay, let's click on pay. Great, this time it does open. Let's select UPI. Success at the rate. Raise the pay. Click on pay now. And here we go. We have our entire checkout flow successful on the deployed serverless application okay and this is all serverless because we are using s3 cloudfront lambda functions so in order to verify that we can go back to s3 okay in s3 we should be able to see the bucket that was created front end right we have this bucket Similarly, if we go to Lambda, we should be able to see our two methods. Okay, if we go to verify, we will see this was invoked. We can go to monitor. You see, it got invoked, it took around 25 milliseconds, it was built for 26 milliseconds. 59 MB used. Okay, we see it's not taking a lot of thing, but able to do what it should do. Okay, so this is through pay as you go. The moment you have a lot of traffic, the people start using, you pay only for what is being consumed. And once you're done, and let's say you want to clean up all the resources, it's very simple. Go back to your command line and just issue a command sls remove so i'll do sls remove on the api at the same time i'll go and say sls remove on the front end so what this will do is it will create and rem delete your cloud formation stack which will also delete all the resources that was created as part of the deploy process okay so at the end of this, you will not have any resources up and running and thereby you will not incur any more charges even if you didn't expect. Okay, so that's all I wanted to share in this video. Hope this was useful and this will help you adopt serverless in your future projects. If you have liked this video, then please do subscribe to my channel so that you are notified on every new videos that I publish. Till then. Happy learning.